Hello math class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson three today of unit four, the ambiguous case of the sine law. And we are going to be talking about cases in which uh, we don't know whether we have an acute or an obtuse triangle. And therefore we are going to have to sometimes do um, both situations or um, I'll show you how to find out if there is one solution to the problem, two solutions to the problem, or sometimes no solutions to the problem. Uh, let's get going in with this definition. So the ambiguous case of the sign law is a situation in which two triangles can be drawn given the information that you have. So this occurs when you are given the lengths of two sides and the measure of an angle and the measure of the, the angle is not between the two sides. It is not contained by the two sides. This will make sense as we move along. Uh, it's kind of a whole bunch of words right now, but you can revisit this and after we've done some problems, I think this will help. So we're going to investigate the math first. Uh, solar company installed panels that are 5.5 meters long and must be tilted at 40 degrees. Uh, we need to, I should say need to choose uh, which supporting brace is needed for each panel if they are available in one meter increments starting at two meters long. Uh, the two meter brace did not work. It tells us what length of brace are we gonna need to hold this. That's what we're going to be investigating. So we're going to use a ruler and a protractor. We're not, but you can if you want to construct a 40 degree angle connected to a 5.5 meter long side in the form of a diagram. So let's do this here. We're going to construct a 40 degree angle. So let's say that this is the ground. We're going to have a 40 degree angle. So that's about 40 degrees, we'll say. And the length of the solar panel is 5.5 meters. Now, what we want to do is we want to find out how long the brace needs to be. Uh, and the brace could lean up and down or like vertical. It could lean this way, right? If it's on a hinge and you don't want it to fall, maybe the brace leaning this way would prevent it the best, or maybe the brace leaning this way would prevent it the best from starting at all. Uh, but what kind of a length of a brace do we need uh, depending on what we choose? So um, the two meter one, it said was too short, um, like that. So we know that this length is more than two meters. What we're going to do for B is we're gonna calculate the height of a triangle with these dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the height of the triangle right there labeled H. And I can do that with a simple trig ratio because this is a right angle triangle. I can find that that is, uh, this is opposite hypotenuse, so sine. So h is equal to sine of 40 multiplied by 5.5. I've already rearranged it. I find the height of the triangle to be 3.54 meters. So essentially, 3.54 meters would be the shortest length for the brace. So question C. Right, uh, the, if the brace is any uh, shorter than the height, it will not touch. It will be like a pendulum and it will swing. As soon as it gets to be 3.54 meters, there is one point exactly where the brace will touch. So for question C, 3.54 is the shortest possible length. Right, cannot get any shorter than 3.54. Could be longer than that because we could have the brace land here, we could have the brace land there, but um, cannot be shorter than 3.54. Question D, what range of supporting brace lengths results in two possible triangles? Okay, so we can imagine that uh, something longer than 3.54 would need to either stop here or here, right? Or if it's a little bit longer, it would be even wider. But at what point do we get to a place where this inside triangle is not possible? And that point is when this length equals 
right? If it's the same length, it would be this taking up the same space and that's not possible. As soon as it's longer, it would be required to go above it and you no longer have a solar panel triangle. So the longest uh, length that it can be would be 5.5. So for D, what is the range? The range would be anywhere 3.54 to 5.5 would give us two options for the triangle. Right, it could be here, it could be here, but as soon as it's longer than 5.5, if it's something like seven, you're gonna be getting one that extends out this way, right? So it's gonna only have one solution if it's longer than 5.5. Let's see. Next question. What information were we originally given? And will this type of information always lead to this case? So E. Um, we were given two sides and an angle, right? We can think of uh, this side given and this side given. And the angle was not between the two sides. It was outside of them. So we were given uh, the situation side, side, angle. And what that represents is that it's side, side, angle. They're not, the angle is not between them. So the information we were given was side, side, angle. Um, and the ambiguous case, it only happens when uh, the side opposite the angle is longer than the height and shorter than the given side. So uh, side opposite the angle must be longer than the height, shorter than given side. Okay, that is the situation that will lead to an ambiguous case. When you're given side, side angle, and the side opposite the angle is longer than the height of the triangle, but shorter than the given side. And then question F, when dealing with an SSA situation, how does the height of the triangle help you determine the number of possible triangles? So if it is shorter than the height, then there are no solutions. So shorter than height, there are zero solutions. Uh, if it is uh, longer than the height but shorter than the length, there are two solutions. So longer than height but shorter than our given length equals two solutions. And then if it's exactly the height or longer than our given side, we have one solution. So um, exactly the height, there's only one place where it can touch the ground and that's vertical. There is one solution. And longer than our given side, also equals one solution. Uh, we're going to do, we're going to work through a couple more problems here. Uh, and hopefully this will be solidified to the different situations. But please definitely feel free to ask any questions that you have or go back and watch this video again. Let's do this. We have example one. Given each uh, side side angle situation, determine how many triangles are possible. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the height of this triangle. We have an angle A given to be 30 degrees and side B to be 12 meters. So we're gonna have 12 meters here and we're gonna have an angle given as 30. Well, first thing we wanna do is determine what the height is. If we determine the height, 
uh, we can then determine in the future what each um, length of this side will mean. So the height is equal to the sine of 30 multiplied by 12. So h is equal to 6 meters. So in our next case here, it tells us that angle A is 30, side B is 12. That's going to be constant. But our side length, uh, side B, is equal to 12 meters. Uh, I gave that one wrong. It is side A that I'm looking for. So side A is equal to 4 meters. So that is now going to be this side. So if that length is 4 meters, it is shorter than the height. So that means that this would not make it to the ground. And in this problem, there would be no solutions. This is not actually a triangle. It doesn't actually complete being a triangle. It looks like this. The, li the lines here don't touch uh, because this is only 4 meters. So it's not actually a triangle. There are no solutions. Uh, the side is too short. Therefore, no solutions. Okay, So we're going to be given situations now. We're going to determine how many solutions there are for each one. Let's do B. I can do it. I think I can do it here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make a new page. So again, we're given angle A to be 30 and side B to be 12. Those are going to be constant. And this time we're given side A to be 8 meters. Uh, so we knew that the height was 6. That was 6 meters. So if it is, if the side that we're given out here is 8 meters, it is going to either be this way or this way. And I know that it would fit in here because it's less than 12. So this is a situation where since the side we're, uh, we're given is less than the height, less than our given side, uh, or more than the height and less than our given side, we have two solutions. So since side A, that's this side over here, is longer than the height, but shorter than the given side, there are two solutions, as shown by the blue lines here. You could have a triangle here or a triangle here. I know they don't officially touch, but we can imagine that this is a triangle and then this is a triangle. Okay, let's. That was for B. Let's do C. Uh, we're given again the same thing, where we have thirty degrees and twelve meters. This time we are given side A or this side over here to be six meters. So that's given right there. We knew that the height was six meters. So if the given side is six meters as well, there is exactly one solution. Side is the same as height, therefore one solution to the problem. If the side that they give us is exactly the same as the height, the side opposite the angle that they give us is exactly the height, there is only one solution. Let's go to the next one. We are given, again, 30 degrees and 12. We know the height is 6. And in this case, the side A opposite our angle is given to be 15. So it's definitely going to go through the ground if it's straight. And it cannot go in here as this length is only 12. So the only option is for it to be out that way. 
So since the uh, given uh, length, the offside, offset the angle, is larger than our side, there's only one solution. So one triangle as side A is longer than our given side. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Uh, that was D. And now it's time for a your turn. So it's a little bit of a new triangle. Um, definitely give it a go. And if you have any questions, please let me know. But unpause when you're done and we'll see if we got it right. Okay. So we're going to be given an angle A. This time it's 120 degrees, so it's an obtuse angle. So I'm going to draw my generic obtuse triangle to start. I'm going to have 120 degrees for angle A and side A, so across from it, is 15 meters. Uh, it says side B is 12. So what we want to see how many triangles there are in this situation. Um, since the side across from our angle is longer than our other given side, there is only one way for this triangle to be drawn. So since um, the side across from the angle is longer than our given side, there is only one solution to this problem. Okay, so it's all about recognizing the side side angle situation and recognizing that the side across from our angle has specific attributes. This one uh, is really easy because, because it is longer than our given side. If it was shorter than our given side, we'd have to find the height of the triangle and find out if it is between the height and the given side or shorter than the height. Uh, it would be uh, much more complex. But since this one is longer than the given side, there's only one solution to the problem. Uh, what I'd like you to do is on your own, I'd like you to check out this really, really cool flow chart. Uh, it's about managing the ambiguous case, what you need to do in each step. Um, I would love to go over it with you in class or uh, personally, if you like. Uh, if you have questions about that, what is this thing, what do I do, please let me know. I'm not going to go over it here, but it is a really, really nice flowchart to help us. It's a little bit complicated, but once we understand what we're doing, it's very, very helpful. We have two more problems. We might just do one more. Okay. So a weather team is launching a weather balloon. Martina uh, is rope is 7.8 meters long and makes an angle of 36 degrees with the ground. And Carl is there with a 5.9 meter long rope. Assuming a triangle is formed between the ropes and the ground, what is the distance between Martina and Carl? Okay, so let's just draw a situation to start with Carl over here and Martina over here, assuming that the balloon is between them. Okay, so we're going to go like that, like that. It says Martina's rope is 7.8 meters and she makes an angle of 36 degrees. And we have Carl with a 5.9 meter long rope. And this right here is a side side angle situation with an angle across from a side. We need to find out um, if this is an ambiguous case. So we need to immediately find out what the height of the triangle is. I can do that using a trig ratio here, always sine. So sine 36 multiplied by 7.8 is going to give us the height. We find the height to be 4.858 meters. Okay, the height is 4.58 meters. 
it is, uh, that means the side opposite of the angle given is between the height and Martina's rope. Therefore, there are two solutions to this problem. Uh, this type of a triangle is one, and when we get to the second one, I will draw that triangle uh, as well. So first of all, let's find out what the two angles um, that we're dealing with over here could be. This one would be our acute angle, uh, and the uh, other angle that we could be dealing with is our obtuse angle. So we are going to find sine, uh, we're gonna find theta. So sine theta, divided by 7.8 and I've already flipped this uh, I know this isn't how we usually do it but I've already flipped this over so I have the side on the bottom sine of 36 divided by 5.9 if I do this I rearrange this I would find theta to equal 51 degrees and that would make sense for this but theta could also equal 180 subtract 51 because we know that the sine of that number could equal 51 or its complement. So theta could also equal uh, 129 degrees. So we have two triangles. We are going to use the acute angle triangle first and then the obtuse angle triangle after. To find out what x is, the distance between Carl and Martina, uh, I can use the cosine law. So I'm going to find out what x is and I know, um, let's see. Ah, yes, I know what this angle is now because I can subtract 51 and 36 from um, 180. So I find this to be 93 degrees. So x squared is equal to 5.9 squared plus 7.8 squared minus 2 times 5.9 times 7.8 times the cosine of 93, and we would find x to equal 10 meters. So in one problem, in this triangle, Carl and Martina would be 10 meters apart, each holding on to the weather balloon. Uh, that's one solution. Let's find the other solution, though. The other solution is if Carl and Martina are on the same side of the balloon, Carl, Martina, this is still going to be 36 degrees. Martina's rope is still 7.8 meters and Carl's rope is still 5.9. But the angle, instead of being 51 degrees, is, we calculated, 121 degrees. So this is the other triangle that could be um, valid in this situation. We can use, uh, again, uh, let's call this y instead. But we can use the cosine law to find out what y is. I can use my 180 degree rule to find out what that angle is. It is 15. 180 subtract these two. So let's use the cosine law to find out what our other possible distance between Carl and Martina is y squared is equal to 5.9 squared plus 7.8 squared minus 2 times 5.9 times 7.8 times the cosine of 15. And you'll notice that the only thing that has changed is the cosine of 15 from our previous example. That changes absolutely everything. So we get y is equal to 2.6 meters. So that is the other distance. So given that information and no other information about where they are, if they're both on the same side of, of the balloon or opposite sides of the balloon, uh, we have two situations that are absolutely equally likely. If you have questions, again, please let me know. Happy to go over it again with you. There is a your turn, so a se uh, pause it here. It's not very long. I'm just going to do it right here, right away. And if you got it right, um, you just play it and see if you got it right after. So what length of rope would Carl need to be holding in order for there to be only one possible triangle? Um, if for there to only be one possible triangle, Carl would have to be either holding the exact same length of rope as Martina or the exact same as the height. 
So Carl's rope would need to be the same as Martina's or the same as the height. She just says to be back here. Okay, so that's the answer to the your turn. Either the same length as Martina's or the same length as the height. Uh, let's do one more, why not? We're into it, we can do it. Leanna and Carrie are hiking in the mountains. They left her car in the parking lot and walked for 12.4 kilometers. So they're gonna have a parking lot and they're going to walk for 12.4 kilometers um, towards a campsite. Uh, they then turn due south, so they walk straight south uh, towards a glacier lake. Okay. Seven kilometers here to the lake here. What a beautiful drawing. The weather was taking a turn for the worse, so they decided to plot a course directly back to the parking lot. So that would be here. Carrie remembers from the map in the parking lot that the angle between the path and the campsite to the glacier is about 30 degrees. So she remembered this. Impressive. What we want to know is what this angle is, the angle they need to take back to the parking lot. So this is a side-side angle situation. We have one across from it. Uh, let's see if we can find out what the angle needs to be. I could just use the sine law to find out what theta is. So sine of theta over 12.4 is equal to the sine of 30 divided by 7.0. Theta is equal to sine inverse sine 30 times 12.4 divided by 7. We find theta to equal 62.3 degrees. I'm looking at my triangle. That doesn't make any sense. Right? It is an open triangle here. So I need to actually take 180 degrees and subtract 62.3 to find out that it's 117.7 degrees for theta. And that makes a lot more sense than uh, 62.3 according to our uh, diagram. And we know that they didn't go like past this because this is only seven kilometers compared to 12.4. It would have to be much longer to them to go past this. Okay. Uh, the your turn. How far would Leanna and Carrie need to travel to reach the parking lot? So what we're trying to do here is trying to find X. So we'll find this angle and then let's use the cosine law to determine it. So 180 subtract 117.7 subtract 30 gets us 32. 0.3 degrees. Now we can use the cosine law to find out what that side is. So x squared is equal to 7 squared plus 12.4 squared. Subtract 2 times 7 times 12.4 and then the cosine of the angle that we just found. Cosine of 32.3. Uh, we would do this and square root it so we would find x is equal to 7.5 kilometers. And that value makes sense. It's nothing like one kilometer, which would be way too small, or 100 kilometers, which would be way too large. So that was a little bit of a long one. Thanks for sticking with it, everyone. There are lots of practice problems for you to do, but this is kind of one of the more difficult uh, lessons. So I really appreciate you sticking with it. And if you have questions at all about this, please let me know by email. We can meet at a Google Meet. We can uh, talk in class, individually at lunch, whatever works for you. Again, thanks so much, everyone, and I will see you soon.